fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Open TTD tutorial series. Today we'll be taking a starting look at more advanced railways. Now if you haven't seen the beginner or intermediate railways tutorial, I highly recommend you check them out, and the link to the playlist of my tutorial series is in the description of this video. So, we're going to find a spot on this island and have a look at some of the designs and some of the ways in which we can use more advanced railways. Now, I must point out that these railways are probably only advanced to a new person. If you've been playing the game a long time, they're probably not that advanced, but we'll be getting more advanced and more complicated as the tutorials progress. So, previously, we had a few different things. Let's take a quick look at them. Over here, down at the bottom, we had one train going backwards and forwards along one line, and it is indeed still doing so. That's okay, but you need more trains really to shift the sheer amount of passengers you can get waiting at some of these stations. One way to combat that is with a loop, one of the easiest ways of getting multiple trains running along the same line. Very little chance of crashes, but we can do better than that. One way that we also looked at is passing places. Not a particularly efficient way of building your railway lines, but it was an interesting way to work out how the different signals break up the track into different block sections. So let's now move on and we're going to come over here and we're going to start with a brand new station. We're going to go and we're going to put a two track station in over here. There we go. And we're going to put a four track station in over here. There we are. Now both of these stations are going to be terminus stations and we're going to have trains going backwards and forwards and all over the place up and down these lines. So let's start over here at the two track station. The method we're going to be using is what I call the up and down. All right, so you have an up line like this and a down line like this. Okay, so the trains on one line go in one direction and the trains on the other line go in the other direction. It heads down the other way. Now I've built these tracks with a space between them, but you don't have to do that. Uh, you can put the track right next to them if you want. So if we just go like this, put the two pieces of track side by side. That is a fairly common way to build these up and down tracks. And then you'll need to put some signals in. Now we've been using these simple type signals and they're the kind of signals we're going to start off with. So for an up and down, you want one set of signals facing one way and the other set of signals facing the other so that trains uh, do actually go one way down the track and the other way down the other side. It's similar to the way roads work in that cars go one way down one side of the road and they go back down the other. And this is the way that trains very often work in real life. So let's just get rid of our little example here and actually see how this works in a practical situation. We've got two platforms here so what we need to do is put a piece of track on the end and we're going to put some basic signals there so a train knows whether to go into a platform or not. We're then going to have a crossing so that our train can cross over from one platform to another and decide which one it wants to use. Then coming out of that, we're going to have our up and down line. So we're going to go up one way and down the other. And that's it. That's pretty much the whole situation here. Um, we have divided this up. Now in this screen right here now, you should be able to see five different blocks. There's one platform, another platform, the up line, the down line, and the section in the middle here which will connect all the other four blocks together. So let's look at that on a slightly larger scale. Here we have a bigger station. We start with a similar sort of premise. So we put some track sticking out of it and we're going to put some signals so the trains know whether to go in and out of the platforms without crashing into each other. And then we're going to connect these all together. So we're going to bring this line in towards the middle this way. Let's just remove that. So this is going to be our in line here. So let's put our up line signal. And this is going to be our line coming out. So let's put our out signal. 
And what we need to do is make sure that all of these lines connect to all of the others. So coming in, we want to be going to platform number one. We want to go into platform number two. We want to be able to go into platform number three and we want to be able to go into platform number four. On the way out, we want to be able to go from platform number one out to the outline. We want to be able to go from platform number two out, from platform number three and from platform number four. And there we go. We can now go in uh, to any platform and out from any platform along this up and down line. Now we're just going to connect these lines together. So I'm going to do a diagonal here like this. There we go. We're going to bring the line up the here a little bit and we're going to connect them up. Not necessarily efficient, but we're not demonstrating efficiency right now. Now, as we learned in a previous episode, you can click and drag on a signal and if you hold control it will place signals all the way along the line so you can see we've got signals facing this way all the way along the line now and if we drag and click that way we've got signals facing all the way along the line here let's put some depots in let's just pop them all over the place let's put some there let's put some here just so that the trains can nip in at any point there we go and we're going to get a load of trains going on this now so new vehicle Let's do one of these diesels here. It, it can carry passengers. We're going to tell it to go from this station to this station. And of course, once it gets to the end of its orders, it'll go back to the beginning again. I'm going to click this button here to clone the train. Now we have two of them cracking. We'll look at more at managing your trains and cloning in a different episode. Check the playlist out for that. Let's just delete this train here. It's getting in my way. So let's send both of these trains going and pause the game. Why am I pausing the game? We want to examine the signals. So the train is going to head off down the line and get ready to come to our station from the in line. Okay, it's going to be coming from this line down here. So let's just fast forward the game until it comes back and we can look at what happens. Here we go. So the train comes into this first section here. The first thing to note is that the signal down here is red. The signal down here is red blocking the entry into this block which the train is currently occupying. Okay. Now the signal into the crossover block is currently green. But when the train goes past this signal the crossover block will change. So let's watch to see what changes. Right, the train is now in the crossover block. Not only is this signal now red, but the signals leading out of the stations are also red. So you cannot enter this signal block, uh, sorry, this, um, this crossover block by any of the in directions. And once it leaves that crossover section and goes into the platform, you can see that this one's now green, this one back here is now green, and only one that is red is this one here which leaves into platform number two. So here comes our next train. As previous, this block here is occupied and the signal is red. This block here is occupied in the station and that signal's red. So hopefully this train is gonna go through this green light here into the cross section and into the other platform past this green light here. Let's see if it does that. Yep, there it goes. Now both trains are occupying both platforms and both the signals are red. But we've got one of our first train and it's on its way out. Well, as it comes towards this signal block, there's no, tr there's no trains in this junction. So the signal heading in is green. You can just see the green glow coming off the back of the signal there. It is a bit difficult sometimes to tell, but um, in the Z-Base graphics pack it's not too bad. So once again the train leaves, it enters this middle signal block and you can see the signal going into that signal block is red. The signal going into the platform here where the train's in is also red and now this signal over here is turning red because the train is entering this block. So the trains can cross over in this cross section. Let's see what happens over here. It's the same situation, but just with a slightly bigger and more complex junction. The first train goes in and the signals go red as it enters the block. The second train comes and again the signals go red as it enters the block. 
Now the train can leave the platform because there's no train in the block and it breaks down in the middle. While it's broken down, let's stop it. Right, now what's happening here? This train here at the back, train 8, is stuck at the back of this station in platform number 1. It can't enter this block and into this junction because there's a train broken down in the way and the light is red at the back in front of it. If we allow the game to continue and allow the train to not be broken down anymore, there we go, it will then be able to enter the block and go through into the next section and follow his friend. Now this sort of network is quite easy to do and I'll show you how to expand it with a junction. So I've added a third station and now we are going to be able to see how these trains can go from different station to different station. Let's get our track here and just as previously we've got an up and down line. Now I'm just going to get rid of these two depots just because we don't want to get things complicated and in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the line down so they almost meet and here is where our junction is going to be. Let's put our signals in as well, so we're heading this way down this line and that way down that line. There we go. Now, our trains want to be able to transfer from one way to another. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, if they're coming in down this line, like our train currently is, and he wants to turn right, we need to put this piece of track in like this. There we go. Uh, if he's coming from that direction and wants to go back down to this um, eastern way, then we want to go that way. And a similar thing for happening in the other direction. And that is one of the simplest sort of T-junctions you can do. Again, not very efficient, but it's a good starting point. Let's get some more trains on the network and see how things go. So I'm gonna add some depots back in. Uh, not there. Uh, not, oh, not there. Um, yep, yeah, that looks good. What we're going to do is we're going to have some new trains. We're going to go new vehicles like that. And I'm just going to send them off in a couple of other different directions. Right, so here we go. We've got a train coming from our new station and he's coming up to the junction. All the signals in this area here, in this block, will turn red. All the signals going into the block will turn red as the train enters it. There we go. So we've got a signal uh, over here which is red. We've got a signal over here which is red and a signal over here which is red. And the train is just swapping round from one part to the other. Train leaves and it's now all green. Same situation here. This time though the train is heading the different direction. And that's as easy as it goes. Not too bad this particular one. I know this is an advanced tutorial but this is the beginning of the advanced tutorial so let's start you off quite easy. And this sort of network is very expandable and very easy to do. You can add more and more junctions, more and more stations, more and more trains. Although, because it's not very efficient and because there are some things you can do with signals that are more advanced and better, you can't really have too many trains on. It can clog up. And I'll show you this now by cloning lots of trains. And we'll put them all out on the network at the same time. Here they come lots of trains all going round and for a, for a while they seem like they're doing okay they filter this way they filter that way they all wait for each other at the junction and that doesn't do too bad and you can see apart from breaking down they were all waiting for each other now we have a problem uh, where do we have a problem we have a problem over here okay we have what's called a deadlock okay uh, between these junctions so what's happened here is we've got a train in the junction block trying to get out along a line which is full waiting to go into a junction block with a train in the block which is waiting to get out along a line which is full and because those lines are all full in a big loop we're stuck our trains can't do anything it's all back to back they will stay like that until we do something about it and this is why this sort of network whilst when you start off is okay once you get lots of trains on it it's dangerous because they can very easily get stuck well we're going to leave it there for now and I'm going to tell you next time how to resolve this issue 
Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked the episode, please remember to click that like button. And if you've got any thoughts, ideas or questions, check them out in the comments below. Remember this tutorial series is a full series, so you can look at the playlist in the description. And also at the end of the video, there's a link to my latest Let's Play series um, where you can check out what I'm up to in there. So thank you for watching, take care, and goodbye.